All right, everybody, what's going on? My name is Brendan Sabolski, and welcome back to another episode of the Average Joe's Fishing Show. Today, we're going to be doing something a little bit different. I'm going to be talking to you guys about a little bit of a misidentification problem that I've noticed uh, the past week and a half on social media with that big splake that I ended up catching through the ice on our first ice video from this year. You can see that video right here if you haven't seen it yet. I plan on discussing the differences between a splake trout and a brook trout. There's probably 50 or 60 comments of different guys telling me that's a brook trout, that's a brookie, there's a brookie, that's not a splake, you're an idiot, that's a brook trout, ding ding ding, look at all the comments. I told myself, I said, Brennan, you got to make a video letting people know the difference because there's so much misidentification out there, it's unreal. And I've seen it a lot before, but this was the first time I've experienced it on one of my posts where everybody was like, that's a brook trout, and it wasn't. It was with 100% certainty a splake. I had all the different arguments in the book that you could imagine guys would throw at me. There are certain ways that you can go about recognizing the differences, so today I want to discuss that with everybody and put a nail in the coffin, I guess you could say. So, I think the biggest misconceptions with distinguishing these species apart from each other is that they can look a lot alike. When you get a, a splake that looks like this one, right here, that I caught, it looked a lot like a brook trout. I won't deny that. People weren't wrong to assume it was a brook trout, but there is ways that you can tell the differences. People said, well, there's no way a splake would ever get that color. Yes, they will. They will inherit that coloration from their parent brook trout. And because it was only a month after the spawn would have finished, or the fall spawn for splake, it was colored right up. A big male, he was in his prime, a mature male, colored up like his big daddy brook trout would have been. Now there is four or five ways that you can really put your finger on it and, and you know hone in that yes, this is a brook trout or yes, this is a splake. The main one that everyone always goes to in comments, whether it's if I catch a splake, someone's gonna say, well, that's a brook trout, look at its tail. Or if I catch a, a brook trout, someone's gonna say, oh no, that's a splake, look at its tail. Now the difference between the tails and the two is that a brook trout naturally has a square tail, opposite of the lake trout, which has a very forked tail. When you get a splake, it has an intermediately forked tail, so it's not as clear to see as the lake trout. It's not a huge V of a fork, but it's also not a perfect square like a brook trout. So that would probably be the number one distinction and argument that you would hear from someone trying to tell you that the species is one or the other. Now, number two, and this one's a tough one, brook trout around the red spots have a naturally occurring blue halo. Now people are going to say, well, the splake you caught had blue halos. It did, but it didn't have true blue halos. If you look at a native brook trout, like when I go into a Gonquin Park and I catch a big colored up male speckle, they are blue. Like I'm talking like sky blue around, right around the outside of those red dots, there is a very, very distinctive blue halo. When you get a splake, you can get blue halos. And this one that I caught, did have blue halos. It was it was a very beautiful colored splake, male splake. Now, mind you, it's only been a month since the spawn ended, so it's still in its peak spawning colors. They only go into a fall spawn, but still they get those colors from their brook trout father. They do have kind of kind of like the tail, it's at like an intermediate blue halo. It's not as distinct, it's not as bright and blue. It's there, it's a very, very fine hue of a blue color, but it's nothing compared to the native rook trout parent. So number one, we got the square tail versus the intermediately forked tail. Number two, we got those blue halos, the true blue halos compared to the false blue halos. Number three, this is one that a lot of guys don't realize, um, and that is actually just the shape of the head of the fish. Now if you look at a brook trout, a native brook trout, when you catch it, they have a little tiny head on them, a little blunt head. Like from their gills to their nose, it's really short and boxy. They don't have a long drawn face like a lake trout. A lake trout has a really big long upper, upper part of the head. It draws down from the nose real long. 
and Brooktro don't have that. They have a little boxy head on them. So now with a the splake, they inherit the lake trout head where they have a really long, kind of long drawn out upper part of their head. Now, one thing that the splake does inherit from the brook trout is the lower jaw. It's a nice hooked jaw. Stub, stubby's top nose, eh? Yeah. You're gonna let it go. Especially in the males, they do get that big kipe. Lake trout naturally don't have that kipe, at least not to um, a very distinctive extent. Whereas male brook trout, when they get mature, they have a great big under jaw and it's, it comes up and it hooks back a great big kipe on them. Now the splake does inherit the lower jaw from the brook trout if it's a big male like this. It will get that kite, it'll get that big jaw, but it also has the longer upper part of the head. That's the third thing that you have to look for to distinguish between the two is the length of the head. The fourth distinction, and this one is always a giveaway, and most people don't realize this one. Brook trout don't have any vermiculations or spots, markings, whatever you want to call them, on their heads. A brook trout will have a flat colored head. It'll be that dark brown, brownish green kind of color that uh, the rest of the body is behind the spots. With a splake, they actually inherit the vermiculations from their parent lake trout. So a lake trout has spots all along their gill plates from their eye right back to their body. So from, from their eye to their jaw and right back, they will have vermiculations all through here on their gill plate, whereas brook trout don't have that. So that is a dead giveaway right away that you have caught a splake rather than a brookie. The fifth distinction between the two species is called pyloric CK. Now this is a little part of the intestine tra intestinal tract coming out of the stomach um, that is different between brook trout, splake, and lake trout. Brook trout will have anywhere from 23 to 55 pyloric CK a splake will have anywhere from 65 to 85 pyloric CK, and then the lake trout, the parent lake trout, will have upwards of 93. The only way to see this, first of all, is to kill the fish and gut it and actually count every little piece of this pyloric CK coming out of the guts, which nobody's going to do. Really, you have to kind of put all the pieces of the puzzle together in order to be 100% sure. Number six, which is kind of a bonus here, like I mentioned earlier, splake are 99.9% .9 man-made fish. They aren't a naturally reproducing species. They aren't a native species of fish. They don't happen in nature. So this fish, for example, when I caught it, I caught this fish in a stocked splake lake. There's no native brookies in that lake. It's only stocked with splake every couple of years. So I know with 100% certainty it is a splake. It's in a stalked splake lake and it has all of the characteristics of a splake. These five physical features, as well as that one other variable that I just mentioned about stalking, are the dead to rights way that you can tell the difference between splake and brook trout. Another key difference with splake and brook trout, like I mentioned earlier, is the growth rate and the size of the fish. Splake will grow a lot faster and a lot bigger at the end of the day. A two-year-old brookie will be about 10 to 12 inches, maybe 14 inches, whereas a two-year-old's plake is gonna be 18 inches. It's gonna grow a lot quicker, and it's gonna grow a lot bigger. The world record for a brook trout is out of the Nipigon River. It grew to 34 and a half inches and 14 and a half pounds, which is, that's astronomically huge. That is, that is never gonna to be touched again. Splake, on the other hand, will grow up to 40 inches, and the world record splake from Ontario was 20 pounds, 11 ounces. So it's substantially bigger. It's one and a half times the size of the record brook trout. If this was a brook trout, this would have been a monster brook trout. It was 24 inches with a 13 inch girth. That would be a massive, massive brookie. I appreciate you staying tuned and watching this video. I hope I helped you learn something today and helped you be able to distinguish between the two species. Sorry for geeking out a little bit. I love trout. They're my favorite species to fish for by far. Brook trout are amazing. Splake are pretty cool too. So if you've never fished for them, go give it a try and uh, leave us a comment on this video letting me know what you think about what I've said or if you have anything to counter what I've said. The five physical characteristics that you can tell between them are a dead giveaway. Put the pieces of the puzzle together and you'll know every time. So thanks for watching everybody. I appreciate it. 
Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And again, my name is Brennan Sabalski, and this is the Average Joe's Fishing Show. See you next time.